name is Amon Bundy. I am speaking to you today from inside a maximum security jail. I am the son of a Nevada cattle rancher. My father, brothers, and myself have been incarcerated for many months, leaving our wives and 26 children all together without fathers to care for them. I ask that you listen to our story and judge us. Yes, judge us. Ask yourself if we were justified in standing for our ranch and the rights of our neighbors. Or should we have just let federal agencies take our heritage? Ask yourself what would have you done? Ask yourself what is right. Let me explain our story. My brothers and I grew up on a family cattle ranch in Southern Nevada, established by our great great grandfathers in 1877. We were raised in humble circumstances in the same little ranch home as our father, Clive and Bundy, built by my grandfather Dave in the 1940s. For five generations, our family has run cattle along the Bunkerville Mountains. Our ancestors were the first pioneers to settle in the Southern Nevada desert. They carved their living out of leveling and farming land next to the Virgin River and ran cattle on the hills. Their homesteads were established before Las Vegas had even one person living in it. Nevada had only been a state for 13 years. Discovering multiple springs on the foothills of the mountains, our forefathers began to build water troughs and holding tanks to supply water for cattle. This made it so the cattle did not have to travel too far for water. In the arid desert where a ranch is, it takes approximately 100 acres to feed one cow. In his lifetime, my father has improved upon this watering system by installing pipes throughout the lower hills from 11 different water sources over a 30 mile span. This has allowed the cattle to benefit from feed in areas where otherwise they could not live because they would have to walk too far for water. This has also greatly benefited the desert wildlife and made hunting and camping plentiful. As a true environmentalist, my father, by expanding the water system and caring for the land and the road, has tremendously promoted wildlife, increased game, improved camping, and generally made the area more enjoyable to be on. Even the desert tortoise would thank Clive and Bundy for the water close by if they could speak. All of this is done at my father's expense and effort costing the taxpayers nothing. With his banged up Dodge pickup, my father would spend many days a month blowing out the water lines with air and repairing the leaks, making sure each water tank was always full. My family has brought life to the Southern Nevada desert for over a hundred years. Imagine what would happen to all the wildlife if this watering system was not maintained or if it was destroyed. Before I move on, it is important that you have a little more background about the legality of our water and grazing rights. In 1890, the state of Nevada created a registry so that ranchers and others could deed their water and grazing rights. In Nevada, as with other western states, the livestock water rights include title to graze. Each deed in print designates how many cattle the owner of the deed is typically grazing around the water. This is the way grazing rights are recorded and protected by the state of Nevada. Just to be clear, these livestock grazing and water rights are vested property, much like mineral rights or deeded rights to your home. These grazing rights are real property. They can be sold, traded, borrowed against, or adversely taken. They are the lifeblood of our ranch and are a valued heritage to our family. Many people have desired to purchase them over the years, but my father has chosen to remain raising cattle in the desert. Without these stock water grazing rights, our ranch has almost no value. My father owns 11 of these stock water grazing rights, deeded with the state of Nevada. In the early 1990s, the Bureau of Land Management, also known as the BLM, an agency of the executive branch, tried to trespass my father for grazing cattle on our deeded range, where my family has run cattle for 138 years. The BLM adopted an extreme environmental no cattle policy designed to remove all ranching from the land. On the wall in the Southern Nevada BLM District Office, they displayed their motto. It read, no move by 92, cattle free by 93. Seeing their intent to destroy his ranch, my father stood on the fact that his ranch was inside the boundaries of the state of Nevada, that the federal agencies are violating the constituted laws between the state and the federal government. 
and that he owns deeded right to graze and water his cattle, established over a century ago. When agents from the Bureau of Land Management told my father that the federal government does not recognize his grazing rights, and that my father must remove his cattle, he told them that they had no authority to take his family's heritage away. When they said they were going to take it away anyway, he said no, and then he said hell no. Several times the Bureau of Land Management tried to drag my father into federal court so they could strip him of his rights, like they have done with thousands of others. Being land inside the state of Nevada, not ceded to the federal government, my father held the constitutional position that federal agencies have no legal constituted authority to administer the land inside the state, and therefore no jurisdiction to trespass or prosecute him. Watching other ranchers, miners, loggers try to defend themselves in federal court when the federal government was the plaintiff, my father often said, going into federal court to defend yourself against federal agencies is like as if a man broke into your home and beat up your wife and children. So to get justice, you take him to court. When they say all arise to the honorable judge, in walks a man in a black robe, and he is the very man that assaulted your wife and children. Of over 100,000 cases in the western states where the federal government is the plaintiff in federal court, federal judges have sided with federal agencies every single time, taking century-old vested property rights away from good, hard-working families. In our area, my dad is the last rancher out of 53. In the state of Nevada alone, federal agencies have taken 5,072 water rights from the people and deeded them to themselves. It is astonishing to think about this when the United States Constitution was specifically designed to prohibit this very thing from happening. We the people have ignorantly allowed federal agencies of the executive branch to be modern day conquerors, gobbling up our land and resources and inserting themselves into every facet of our lives. Our homes, our schools, our churches, our jobs, our industries, our manufacturing industries, our housing industries, our agricultural industries, our mineral industries, our financial industries. Everywhere there is wealth, they seek to control and take. They will not stop expanding and growing on their own. They will not limit themselves because they do not produce a product in order for them to survive and gain and grow. They must take from the people who produce a product. The judicial branch of government, the courts and the judges, have not been an effective check and balance to these agencies for over 60 years, giving them a free pass to prey upon the wealth of the American people. U.S. Congress has tried to stop them twice in the last decade by defunding them. We saw through this that the executive agencies are too powerful for even the United States Congress to limit. So how did people come to know about the Bundy family, my family? Well, in April 2014, the BLM joined forces with four other federal agencies to enforce their unlawful trespass and destroy our ranch. They set up a massive military-like compound on the range. With 200 hired guns, mercenaries, they surrounded our ranch and put it under siege. They began to brutally round up our cattle with helicopters, running them to death, shooting them from the air, and leaving the newborn cows out on the range to thirst to death or to be eaten by coyotes. The dead cattle were dumped into mass graves dug by federal backhoes. They also began destroying the water infrastructure that had been established over a hundred years ago. Our family was threatened by BLM personnel that said, if we resisted in any way, this would be another Waco or Ruby Ridge. Knowing beforehand the abuses that they were about to cause would bring public outcry, the BLM built two First Amendment areas in non-conspicuous places and threatened the public with arrest and federal charges if anyone protests outside these areas. Our family, friends, and other local people began to protest first. They insisted not to have their First Amendment rights corralled and refused to protest in these remote, designated areas. With hired snipers on the hills, federal agents began to gang beat protesters for filming their abusive actions. For several days, they body slammed us to the asphalt, sick dogs on us, tased us, and threatened to open fire on us for protesting on what they said was their property, even standing next to State Highway 170. With guns to our heads and our children's heads, federal agents said that the road belonged to the state 
but the earth under it belonged to them. Much of this abuse was caught on video and was posted on the internet. Within hours, millions had viewed the gross actions of these federal agencies. People from all over the United States began flowing to the ranch. That Saturday, thousands had assembled and demanded the Clark County Sheriff Department and the state governor to do their jobs in protecting the people from out of control federal agencies. The Clark County Sheriff's Department finally stepped in and ended the abuse. All federal agents left the area within an hour and the surviving cattle were brought back to the ranch to be doctored or turned out on the range. And then we went back to ranching. This infuriated the bureaucrats. People such as Harry Reid, who has personally made millions off of land deals with the Bureau of Land Management, publicly came out against our family and the people that stood up to them, calling us domestic terrorists, threatening that this was not over. Many of us wore name tags that read, Hi, my name is so-and-so, and I'm a domestic terrorist. Great-grandmothers, little children, and everyone in between wore them proudly. Since then, federal agencies have mounted a continual media campaign to demonize my family and those that stood against their horrific actions. In defense, we've had to respond by publishing the truth. My mother, sisters, and many of our friends and family have done the best we could to stop them from controlling the narrative. We knew that if they could change the public sentiment, they would once again justify forceful action against us. In an effort to make sure that this did not happen to any more families in Nevada, in early 2015, my family, along with several state representatives, entered a bill into the Nevada legislature. This bill would end the federal land grabs in the state and force the federal government to follow the Constitution to control land inside the state. Bill AB 408. It was the most publicly supportive bill in the Nevada history. Despite its popularity, bureaucrats united together from within and changed the text of the bill right before it was voted on. The new text gave them more power rather than take it away. It was a full array of politics at its finest. On the last day of the House vote, we had to kill our own bill, hoping that Nevada legislatures would stand up to federal agencies and protect families like ours. We left Carson City with our heads hanging low and went back to ranching, working, and raising children. Before I go on, I need to say that even though our family is suffering great pain and sorrow right now, we do not hate or harbor anger for anyone. We pray daily and diligently for those who have and continue to harm us. We love the Lord Jesus Christ and desire in the end for all of us, even those that have spitefully put us in these jails, to find peace and happiness through his forgiveness and example. Through these great tribulations, we have strived to follow the Lord and do only as he has asked. Now let me go on. At the end of 2015, many became aware of another ranching family in Oregon, the Hammonds, where the father, Dwight, 74, and the son, Stephen, 43, had been put in prison for resisting federal agencies of the executive branch in taking their lands. The abuse to this family over two decades is terrible. Federal agencies of the executive branch came together and have taken their water rights, destroyed much of their ranch, restricted use of private property and access to it. Through the courts, they have taken hundreds of thousands of dollars in fines, forced them to sign that they would only sell their ranch to the BLM and put them in prison the second time for doing maintenance on their ranch without a permit from the Bureau of Land Management. All of this was done inside the state of Oregon on private property or land that federal agencies do not have con constituted authority to administrate. These same tactics are being used to take established property rights all over the United States. The EPA, an agency of the executive branch, is using the same playbook in the eastern states. Before federal agencies diminished ranching and destroyed logging in Harney County, where the Hammonds lived, the county had the highest family incomes in the state of Oregon. 
Now families in Harney County struggle with the lowest incomes in the state. Over the last 30 years, Harney County has consistently declined in incomes, population, and jobs because of the federal government's overtake of the land and resources. The best hope of employment anyone has now in Harney County is working for a federal agency of the executive branch, the BLM, Forest Service, or Fish and Wildlife. Government employment tallies at 58% of Harney County income. This percent does not include those on government assistance. Together, approximately 70% of Harney County residents depend on the government for their living. The remaining minority, the producers, are choking from forceful regulation and live in fear of retaliation if they speak out. Those that do speak out against the federal agencies, like the Hammond, are targeted, demonized, their lands are taken, they are prosecuted and thrown in prison. What has happened to us, the Hammonds, and the people of Harney County is a type and a shadow of what is happening to our entire country. We must stop federal agencies of the executive branch from taking over and controlling the producing class. Federal agents have shown they are willing to destroy entire state and county economies and put the American people in prison to protect, increase, and justify their gain and control. It is rapidly coming down to federal agencies gaining control or the American working class. And these federal agencies of the executive branch have been building up heavy military forces to make sure their projects of ambition are not limited. Look at what they put us in jail for, conspiracy to impede a federal officer's duties. Or in other words, resisting them from doing what they want to do. Federal agencies have conspired for years in impeding the jobs and taking the income of the American working class, diminishing states, counties, and destroying more incomes and livelihoods than any other people in the history of this country. When someone finally stands up and says no more, when that person says to federal agencies, your duties are unlawfully destroying our livelihoods and destroying our states, our counties, our future, and our children's future, when this message becomes loud enough that people take notice, federal mercenaries hired by agencies of the executive branch move in, shoot and arrest the messengers, and drive fear into anyone that might stand up. Federal agencies of the executive branch are willing to kill and destroy families to protect their ambitions to get gain. Just ask the Finnecombe family or the 26 Bundy children with their fathers locked up if I speak the truth. No moral principle, tradition, heritage, livelihood, or way of life, or life itself appears to be more important than their ambitions to get gain. Produce nothing, take everything, modern day robbers. In my 40 years, I have seen a stomach full of my hardworking neighbors lose their homes, incomes, heritage, and freedoms at the hands of these wool covered predators. Often I ask myself, what is to be done? What are we to do? How can we allow this to continue? Do people care about what is happening to our country? Seeing directly what federal agencies did to the Hammonds and to the citizens of Harney County, experiencing firsthand at the Bundy Ranch how federal agencies are willing to kill everyday American men and women to keep themselves in power. If the Lord did not protect so many people to come and show up at the Bundy Ranch, I am certain that federal agents would have taken our lives. Something had to be done. How could we pass these gross and growing deteriorations of rights and liberties over to our children? What would be left by the time they are raising their children? Feeling a providential urge, a love for my neighbors, and a great concern for my country, I used the public connect connections made during the Bundy Ranch to inform everyone I could about the abuses to the Hammond family and how adverse federal agencies have taken over and destroyed the economy in Harney County. Many, including myself, began to petition the county and state representatives to do their duty and protect the liberties and pursuit of happiness of the people in the county. All of this fell on deaf ears. The elected representatives did not even respond to one of our emails. We know they received thousands. We learned later that the FBI, an agency of the executive branch, contacted the sheriff, state and county representatives and directed them not to respond to the people's petitions. This lack of response created an extreme environment of frustration with the people. No matter what the people did, even after filing an official notice of redress of grievance, the representatives would not respond. 
It is my belief that if the FBI would have stayed out of it, elected representatives would have responded and taken a lead. This would have ended the mass frustration, and the people would have gotten behind their representatives with major support, satisfying any need for the people to act on their own. The entire protest at the Wildlife Refuge could have been avoided if the FBI would have stayed out of the way of our republic form of government. But then again, the FBI could not justify their jobs or have a reason to play with their war toys if the American system of government was allowed to work properly. This reminds me of a John F. Kennedy quote, those who make peaceful revolutions impossible make violent revolutions inevitable. The Hammond case was setting a very dangerous precedent in federal court. The abuse has been too great to turn a blind eye. The elected representatives were ignoring the people. What were we to do? Feeling inspired to do so, on January 2nd, less than an hour before the rally in support of the Hammond, I proposed to a group of people, including a sheriff deputy, that we need to do more to bring attention to the abuses and to educate the American people of their rights. I shared how I felt and express that we should use adverse possession law to reverse the actions of these federal agencies and give the land that has been stolen back to the people of the county. This was legal, beneficial to the people, and would bring a lot of media exposure to these abuses. With a majority in agreement, we took residents of a federally controlled wildlife refuge 30 miles outside of town. To create this refuge, over a hundred ranching families lost their ranches, homes, their lands to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, another agency of the executive branch. As U.S. adverse possession law requires, we changed the name of the refuge to the Harney County Resource Center, changed the signs, including the vehicles and equipment, contacted the utility companies, flew the American flag high, opened the post office address, and created a land registry to adjudicate the parcels back to the people of Harney County. Oh, and meanwhile, we attracted international media attention that had no idea what adverse possession was. At times, it was quite comical watching the controlled mainstream media who had free access to roam the facilities, talking to us openly through each day, and then reporting how we were somehow dangerous armed militants. We shook our heads over this many times. In just a couple of weeks, we attracted over a thousand visitors, men, women, and children. Even elementary students came to the center to do homework reports on the events. The local people began supplying all our food, supporting us financially, and took care of us well. They also shared their horror stories of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife, the BLM, and the Forest Service actions over the past several decades. Out of our many visitors, hundreds attended our seminars on property rights, including state representatives from five different western states. These people were taking the message back to their hometown and organizing community meetings for us to attend. Meanwhile, the FBI, need I remind you, an agency of the executive branch, took over the high school, county buildings, and downtown Burns, and the airport, terrorizing the local people trying to scare them into believing that their force was necessary to protect them against us. As time went on, the local people started to see through this. The FBI knew they had to act quickly to end our education on what federal agencies of the executive branch have been doing to the American people. Emails from government officials read, the virus is spreading, indicating that our message was too effective and must be stopped. January 26, on the way to a community meeting, in Grant County, Oregon. The FBI and Oregon State Police ambushed us and opened fire without cause, shooting my brother Ryan and killing our friend and fellow Arizona rancher, LaVoy Finicum. They shot him multiple times in the back with his hands in the air. The FBI tried to cover up their participation by denying that they shot and hiding the bullet casings. If we would not have filmed the attack, they would have got away with it. Never did we hold a gun or show any type of threat to them. We were carrying laptops, projectors, and a PA system, planning on having another effective meeting with the people of Grant County, including the sheriff. We were invited to meetings like this every day that week. Our schedule was filling up. With millions of dollars, thousands of federal agents, control of the main media, 
federal agencies were still not able to suppress the truth. So they resolved to use force, much like a big bully, who is not intelligent enough to convince people to follow him. So he just beats them up if they don't. Our message is one of freedom and choice. Their message is of coercion and force. With my brother Ryan and I arrested and others, the FBI went on a massive witch hunt, arresting people from all over the United States. Many had nothing to do with Oregon, but were in support in 2014. I suppose they thought this was their chance to completely destroy any opposition to their ambitious agenda. My father, a 70-year-old man, was met with 30 or so FBI operators in the airport. He was on his way to visit my brother and I. My brother Dave, they tactically converged on him while he was unloading lumber for the house he is building. Over 40 agents with assault rifles and full tactical gear in the little town of Delta, Utah, shooting flashbangs at him, one of the most reserved, kindest men I know. My brother Mel was in Arizona when they converged on him. Now with the men of the Bundy family locked away in prison cells, charged with pretend offenses, the Bundy women are left to tend for our children and our livelihoods, including the ranch. Meanwhile, federal agencies of the executive branch are making plans once again to take our homes, the ranch, remove the cattle, sell them for their profit, destroy the water infrastructure, and take all our assets of value. This would force my mother, our wives, and children out of our homes with nothing to our names. Meanwhile, we the providers and protectors are locked away, facing vindictive charges that if convicted could put us in prison for the rest of our lives. We never once hurt anybody, threatened anybody, or used force in any way. We simply stood for our rights and the rights of our neighbors. Adding salt to our wounds, the extreme environmental group that called themselves the Center for Biological Diversity that has worked hand in hand for several years with the BLM, Forest Service, and other federal agencies had the audacity to go to my mother at the ranch and offer to buy our century-old family grazing rights for next to nothing. They indicated that they would offer us some money before they took them from us. My mother kindly asked them to leave. They have followed up by phone and continued to harass her. At the beginning of this, I asked you to judge us to form an informed conclusion in your mind if we were justified to stand for our rights. Time will only allow me to express the hundredth part of what has happened to us. However, before making that judgment, consider a couple more points. Time will only allow me to express the hundredth part of what has happened to us. However, before making that judgment, consider a couple more points. Our founding fathers principally understood and documented clearly that the central government, the federal government, has very limited power, especially inside a state, and particularly in controlling land and resources inside a state. The founders made detailed statements about their intent when they drafted the Constitution these statements are known as the Federalist and Anti-Federalist Papers. Federalist page number 45, pages 292 and 93 reads, The powers delegated by the proposed Constitution to the federal government are few and defined. Those which are to remain in the state government are numerous and undefined. The powers reserved to the several states will extend to all objects which in ordinary course of affairs concerns the lives, liberties, and properties of the people, and the eternal order, improvement, and prosperity of the states. Federal agencies in direct opposition to the Founders' intent are claiming over 51% of the lands in the western states, approximately 600 million acres, and 72% of the subsurface mineral rights. 
It is estimated that the West has more mineral concentration than anywhere else in the world. It is no wonder why these federal agencies of the executive branch are building up standing armies and are willing to kill their own people for it. By ignoring the constitutional limitations on the federal government, people are being abused. The land and resources in the states are being held and sold for federal profit, and the people are left begging for the crumbs. Just as the founders predicted would happen, if the states lost their gallant patriotism and stopped enforcing the limitations on the central government. Unfortunately, the state cannot properly protect the people without the taxes from the land and resources. The people cannot put food on their table, clothe themselves, or build their homes without the land and the resources. And federal agencies cannot sustain themselves or continue to build their standing armies or manipulate the states, counties, and people through welfare contracts and grants without the profits from the land and the resources. All wealth and power derives from the land and resources. Everything we eat, live in, wear, use, need, or find physical comfort from comes from the earth. Control the land and the resources and you control the people. To protect the people from the evil designs of men who would use government to gain ultimate power, our founders limited the amount of land and resources our government may control. These limitations are found in the powers granted to the federal government through the Constitution, the supreme law of the land. See Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17. Our family ranch was put under siege by an army of federal agents, 200 hired mercenaries. Our lives were openly threatened at gunpoint for many days in a row. Our cattle were run to death by helicopters shot from the ground and the air then buried in mass graves right in front of us. Our century-old water infrastructure was being destroyed by federal backhoes. We were body slammed to the asphalt, tased, gang beaten, detained, and interrogated, and had dogs sicked on us. Our children multiple times had the red dots of hired snipers on their little bodies. The Hammond family and thousands of others across the Western state have had their land stolen, water rights taken, and experience a full list of similar abuses by these federal agencies of the executive branch. Agents of the executive branch claim to have legal, unlimited authority to abuse the people and control the land and resources. We, the people, are in danger. The Constitution prohibits their actions. Everything that is American is against it. The United States is not a communist form of government where the government owns and controls everything. This is against our founding principles and our founders made it against our laws. The only way they have gotten away with it is because the Department of Justice, an agency of the executive branch, yes, the Department of Justice is another agency of the executive branch, not the judicial branch. The largest legal team ever known to man, with over 7,000 U.S. attorneys, with unlimited budgets, assistance, support, and resources, all paid for by the American people. They have deceitfully and forcefully, through the courts, shoved down the throats of the American people that agencies of the executive branch have no limits and that the Constitution does not apply to them. They have destroyed federalism and infiltrated our checks and balances, all in an effort to centralize power, to funnel it into one body so they can control it for their own gain. The only state for power, especially the land and the resources, is to distribute it into millions of people's hands all across this great country, from sea to shining sea, allowing each person to live in liberty while enjoying the benefits of the increase of the earth through the law of the harvest. Land and resources equals power. It is what all ancient and modern conquerors desire. The land and resources must not fall into the hands of a small group of people. It must not be centralized or nationalized. Our food, water, homes, clothing, transportation, our communication, everything that sustains us and everything that we find physical comfort from hangs at risk if the heads of these federal agencies obtain their ultimate objective. Control the food, water, air, lumber, iron, and other resources. Control the use of the earth, and you have obtained ultimate power over the people. Never was this just about some cattle running in the desert or just about some poor rancher trying to hold on to his way of life. This is about God and country. 
about standing so the bad does not overcome the good. This is about each individual, about you, your children, and your grandchildren. This is about food on your table, about having a home to put a table in. This is about agency to choose, about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for many generations to come. This is about freedom, or maybe, just maybe, the horrible pains of being kept from our families for this long has driven us insane. You be the judge. I know the Lord has protected us and kept us from falling into despair. I know He loves us, and in time I am certain that He will allow us to go home and have that so desired reunion with our little family and all the others we love so very much. Thank you for listening. Namaste.